Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on position etudes out of the third Suzuki book, and we are also going to be working on uh, major and minor scales, the last two things in this book. So we are almost done. Um, these are these aren't really something that you would play for somebody. Uh, etudes are designed specifically to work on one or two particular things. Um, this will help with positional shifts. Um, and then this will get you, <clears throat> this is the equivalent of homework, so to speak. Um, so if you are, if you consider the, the songs to be tests, um, you know, something that you can play, something that you can perform in, in front of somebody, uh, the positional etudes are going to be more along the lines of your homework. Um, these are going to be the things that will help you move forward in terms of getting better at playing um, and dialing down on, it can be anything from trills to uh, positional shifts to string crossings. There's, there's a bunch of different etudes out there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first line in the third position on the A string. Um, it's, these aren't terribly complicated. They have one or two items in them that are going to be a little bit rougher to do, and developing that is specifically what they are working on. Um, this first one, this is the main thing right here. Except instead of playing one and four, entire like line for the A2. So um, to begin with, let's go ahead and just play um, let's go ahead and do just a one and a four just to get that A in the or the the B in the D down. So now what we're going to do pardon me is we are going to play one four one, and then do your shift up to the exact same note, shift back to one, one, four, one, shift, one, four, one, shift. So it'll look like this, well, it'll look and sound like this. So go ahead and join me for that. Uh, we'll just do it three times. So, go ahead and join me. Three, four. Shift. Shift. Okay, so now we have the basics of what this entire line is about. Uh, go ahead and play along with me. The fingerings are written in, super handy. Um, Go ahead and join me for this one. We'll play it through one time, and then we'll uh, and then we will repeat, and then we'll move on to the next one. So, three, four. Next one, very simple as well, exact same basic fingerings. Um, they have it as an eighth note though, um, instead of a quarter note. So instead of you're looking at so go ahead and join me for that. Um, yeah, we'll just do that, uh, three, uh, two, it's really two bars, but one's broken, funky. Uh, go ahead and join me for that. Three, four. Again, three, four. And then on to the second thing, which is... Basically the same thing with a slight repeat. 
go ahead and join me for this uh, second section, and we'll go ahead and get that done. Three, four. <laughs> everything together for the second line. Go ahead and join me for uh, tying everything together. Three, four. This isn't really something that you would want to play for somebody because it's just a it's a it's a technical exercise, um, but it does definitely help hammer in how to get those shifts in where you need them. So starting a, starting to look at the third line, um, we have an extended two. That's what that X means. Um, so we're basically playing the same thing from line one. Um, there is a sharp in the fourth measure. Uh, well, here, let me play it for you and I'll, I'll show you how it sounds. There's only one note that's different, but it looks different under your fingers. So it looks like this. <laughs> First two measures, go ahead and join me for that'll be one, one, extended two, three, extended two, one, one. And then um, just the first two measures. So go ahead and join me. One, two. Okay. Yeah, well, and then it goes back to one. But let's do that one more time and then we'll do the last half ish of that line. Three. Okay, and then the last half of that looks like this. So that F is going to be an F sharp, uh, so that'll be up another half step, so from your two on the E. It'll be a full step instead of the normal half step that we were playing a three on. So it'll be two, four, two. So let's play those last three measures. Go ahead and join me. Three, four. And then tying everything together with the repeat. Go ahead and join me. Three, four. continuing to build on that. Um, the last two lines are all played together. Sounds like this. Let's do that first line together. Um, it's that simple, instead of three, four, it'll be an extended to three, um, just like we had done in the previous one. So we'll do the first line together. Three, four. 
four. Go ahead and join me on this one. line is just like the previous one that we worked on. So go ahead and join me for that. We're, we're taking the pickup off of the tail end of the last line in the A section. Yeah, that, that tracks. Designations get kind of weird when you're dealing with etudes. So uh, on that um, BD11 uh, one, one shift pickup, go ahead and join me. Three, four. <laughs> Tying everything together, go ahead and join me. Uh, there is no repeat on this one, so we're only playing through it once. So go ahead and join me. Three, four. <laughs> Moving on, we're doing basically the same thing, only we're shifting it down to the D string. This is where things get really interesting. Um, because that first line, if you were playing it in first position, um, you would just have a low one. However, we're working specifically on third position here, so everything is going to be on the D string, so we're going to be going up, uh, we're going to be shifting up a bit. Um, the other nice thing about this is it does, it, it's an easier workaround to avoid an open A, which you can't vibrato on. Uh, we haven't quite gotten to vibrato, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, it also, if you're playing a lot of stuff on the D string, and then you all of a sudden have an open A, it has a completely different timbre, it has a different like tonal sound to it. Um, so being able to keep, instead of you would have so it stays more homogenous, the, the sound doesn't have a distinct shift, um, doesn't have a, a break to it, it all stays on the same string, so it sounds more put together. Um, so that's kind of what we're working on here, and that's one of the ways that it's really handy to be able to get around um, sections that would have like extended fours and low ones. You can just shift into third position and do all of your work on like the D string or the A string or the G, wherever you happen to be. So that's what this is getting into. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a fifth string, so there's no E string that I can pluck, um, which is why shifted position is super handy on the A string because you can get higher on the A string, obviously. Um, but on the D or the G or the C, it allows you to keep that homogenous sound um, and allows you to vibrato on a lot more stuff so that you don't have a weird open string just like completely flat. Or not flat as in pitch, but flat as in not able to be vibrato and tonality and that kind of stuff. So. Go ahead and join me on uh, the first line. We will take the repeat. It is the exact same thing as the first line from the A string. So go ahead and join me. Three, four. Um, let's do that one more time and then we'll move on. So. One, uh, we'll just play through it one more time. We won't take the repeat and then we'll move on to the next one. So, one, two, three. <laughs> Moving 
on to the next one. It is basically the exact same thing as the second line from the A position. So moving on to the second line in the D section, it is the exact same thing as the second line in the A section. That's the other nice thing about these etudes, um, is when you're working on something, they'll occasionally shift it up or down. It could be a string, it could be a couple of steps. To work on the same concept in different areas to build familiarity with the instrument. So um, let's go ahead and do those first three bars on the second line. Uh, so the pickup, and then, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that uh, second line of the D string section. Go ahead and join me. Three, four. Okay, and then moving on to the second chunk, the second section of that. Um, the exact same thing as the second chunk on the second line in the A section. Um, go ahead and join me for that. Three, four. tie it all together. Uh, we will take repeats, so it'll be two of the first section, two of the second section, and then we'll move on. Go ahead and join me. Three, four. section is the exact same as third line in the A section. Um, it's just down a string. I'll go ahead and play through that third line once and then have you all join for the one time through with repeat. Uh, actually, this is in 3-4, not 4-4. Four, four. My apologies. So it should be 2-3 and then starting. So go ahead and uh, I will go ahead and play through this. 2-3. <laughs> We're not doing three, four, we're doing two, three, so it'll be an extended two. Go ahead and join me. We will take repeat on this. section is quite literally like the last two bars in the A section. Um, I'll go ahead and play through it once since we've already covered it elsewhere. Um, I will go ahead and have you all join me. This one does have, uh, it was an F sharp in the A section. Uh, we are dealing with flats and naturals in this one. Um, let's go ahead and just do the first line and then we'll do the second line because that has the naturals to it. So I'll play the first line, come back and pick you all up. Uh, then we'll, I'll play the second line, come back and pick you all up, and we'll tie everything together. So uh, first line, just listen real quick. Three, or two, three. <laughs> It is extended twos and uh, regular threes, just up a, up a half step. So go ahead and join me on this one. Um, we'll just do the first line, leaving off the last two eighth notes, because that's a pick up to the next section. Um, yeah, go ahead and join me on this one. Just keep in mind, it's extended twos and then a half step up for your uh, flat threes. Two, three. <laughs> And then 
the next uh, chunk of that is going to sound like this. <laughs> Join me this time. Two, three. So that's where you'd be using your four, so it'd be a full step up. Um, you could do extended to extended three, but they want you to use fours here because it fits under the hand more naturally. So let's go ahead and do that entire section. Uh, we will not be taking the repeat on it. Uh, last two bars of the D section. Uh, two, Fourth position is one of my favorites, just because it's something that I've used a lot in classical playing, especially within orchestras and such. Um, super handy. Basically, it allows you to play the A string on the D or the D string on the G. Um, it's just super useful. So, um, to begin with, uh, we're going to practice this. <laughs> So starting first string on, or first finger on the A, which would be a B. The thing about this is you can check it with a string underneath. Uh, well, no, uh, you have to go down a string, my apologies. Uh, but what we're looking for... So the first line is going to sound like this. So this is kind of condensing what we've been working on on the previous page. Um, so we're shifting a full step farther than we were before. Before we were doing... Now we're doing um, with the regular three, second time through it's the two three figure, third time through it's the one extended two and then four figure, so um, Go ahead and join me. We'll do the first two bars, the second two bars, and then the uh, last three bars. So go ahead and join me on the first two bars. Two, three. <laughs> Second two bars, bars three and four. Go ahead and join me. Um, this one has the extended two and then the half step to three. So uh, go ahead and join me. Two, three. Again, two, three. last three bars have the extended two and then the four, which will be a whole step up. Go ahead and join me. Two, three. One more time. Two, three. Go ahead and join me for the entire first line. We will be taking the repeat. Two, three. 
So now we're going through the, the basic permutations from the last page, just kind of condensed down into a single line. Um, it'll sound like this. <clears throat> so uh, go ahead and join me. We'll do the first two measure chunk, the second two measure chunk, and then the last chunk. Um, so first two-ish measures, go ahead and join me. One, two, uh, two, three. <laughs> two-measure chunk. Go ahead and join me. Two, three. Again. Two, three. And the last chunk. Go ahead and join me. Two, three. One more time. Two, Three. So, tying all of that together with the repeat. So, go ahead and join me. Um, we'll take the repeat on this, so two times through, and then we'll move on to the next section. Two, three. Section is still going to be in fourth position, basically everything we just worked on down a string. Um, the first line sounds like this. Exact same fingerings, exact same notes, knock down five steps so that you are down one string. Go ahead and join me, um, and we will go ahead and hammer that line out. <coughs> so, th uh, two, three. Mm -hmm. through with repeats, um, and then we will move on to the next section. Two, three. Next line is 
literally the exact same thing as the second line in the fourth position A section or A string section. Um, so it sounds like this. <laughs> Join me, we will take the repeat, and then we'll move on to the next section. Two, three. gets a little bit different. There's a different interval in here that we haven't run across before. Um, so before it's been one, one in the same place, one, three, four, back to one, one, two, extended to three, one, one, uh, extended to four. This one has a slightly different deal um, because we have the first section. <laughs> sharp G A and then is F sharp G sharp A and then is F sharp G sharp A sharp uh, G sharp F sharp. So it's a little bit different. We'll go ahead and pick up the first two bars. Go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do so in shift to position you're looking for F sharp. <laughs> the interval you're looking for. Um, so let's do the first two bars. Uh, two, three. <laughs> and that top note uh, with the three on top of the third ledger line, if you just hold down the finger, that's your A harmonic. So if you're not sure if you're in tune when you're on top, You can get that harmonic by putting your finger down where you think it is, um, but not pressing the string to the fingerboard, and you'll get it to be able to ring like that. Kind of cool. So let's do the first two bars. Um, two, three. Let's do that one more time. Two, three. And then let's do the second two bars. This one's going to be an extended two and then the three in the exact same place on that A harmonic. One, or uh, two, three. Again, two, three. And then the last three measures. Uh, are going to be extended to extended three, uh, so it'll be an A sharp. It won't be, it'll be. So uh, go ahead and join me. Two, three. Okay, so tying that all together. Let's go ahead and take the repeat on this, and then we will move on. Two, three.
next section is just the normal continuing and permutation, continuation and permutation thereof. Sounds like. <laughs> Got that. Um, so the last line is the same basic permutation uh, thereof as we've done before. Sounds like this. So go ahead and join me and we will play through to it gets it gets pretty high not gonna lie so moving on let's take a look at the major and minor scales And these are, these are something you will always come back to. Um, scales are a thing. Um, so in the D major scale, uh, you've got an extended four on the C, you've got an extended four on the G, and then everything else fingerings are written in. Um, so it's uh, one, ex well, extended two, extended four, open, one, extended two, extended four, open, one, three, four, open, one, three, four. So, sounds like this. Extended twos, extended fours on the bottom two strings, uh, a one, three, four on the top two. So go ahead and join me. Uh, three, four. So there's um, melodic, harmonic, and I cannot remember the name of the third one off the top of my head. Oh, melodic, harmonic, and natural minors. There we go. Um, so this one is the melodic minor, which changes how it goes up and how it goes down. So going up to the top, it's uh, one, three, four, open, one, uh, extended two, extended four, open, one, two, four, open, uh, natural one, sharp three, four. So it sounds like this going up. attention to the fingerings and the sharps and naturals and then we will run through this one. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Three, four, Super simple, super easy. 
Um, sounds like this. You will be up into the shifted position. It'll be shifted one, three, four at the very top end. Sounds like this. <laughs> So go ahead and join me for that. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, go ahead and join me for that. Three, four. Again, changes as it goes up, as, as it comes down. sharp three four open low one extended to four shifted one three four coming down it's four two low one four two low one open four two low one open four two one open so go ahead and join me on that one three four <laughs> fast through these, uh, but these are something that you need to take some time and work on in practice. Um, you also kind of need to get them into your head just to figure out what's going on. Um, pay attention to the key signatures, they will tell you. This is really handy because it, it gives you the fingerings on what and where, um, but you need to keep in mind, um, like on the G minor, it just has a uh, do to do. <laughs> Pardon me. On the G melodic minor, one, two, three, four measures from the end, it just has two extended one open. You need to be paying attention to the key signature to realize that that is a low one instead of a natural. Um, so key signatures are definitely going to play a, a part in this. If you need to go through and notate what is flat, um, on the staff and above the staff, because the, the key signature applies to, in this case, with the G melodic minor. Um, in B flat, the two notes are going to be B flat and E flat. Um, every single B flat and E flat, no matter where it is on the staff, are going to be flat in this key signature. Uh, so if you need to go through and notate that, just keep that in mind. Um, go ahead and join me for the melodic minor, then we'll move on. Three, four. <laughs> favorites C major everything is natural um, go ahead and join me on that 
We're starting on the lowest string, going up to C on the A, and then coming back down. So, three, four. Should be E flat if I remember correctly. Um, this one does. This one is different as it goes up than when it comes down, as for all of the melodics. into fourth position instead of over to the open A because you play uh, basically so uh, it's going up it's A B C going down it's C B flat A flat G so doing that in fourth position makes a lot more sense um, so go ahead and join me on the melodic minor, or C melodic minor. Three, four. We are going to be working on A major. I'm going to sound like this. There's a lot of sharps. Keep that in mind. is one, two, extended four, one, two, extended four, uh, and then they have a different pattern going up the A string, one, three, shift, one, three, shift, one, extended two, three. Um, so go ahead and join me for that. Um, yeah, go ahead and join me. Three, four. <laughs> C sounds like this. This will finish this out. I don't believe it's. Oh, there's some treble drills on the backside, but um, that'll be the end for today. So let's uh, after we finish the melodic minor. So let's go ahead and hammer through this. Go ahead and join me. Three, four.
the end for today. I know that we blew through the ma uh, major and minor scales fairly quickly. Um, these are going to be something that you need to put in a fair bit of practice on. Um, I still warm up with scales and that kind of thing on the daily. Um, when I'm practicing and getting stuff together, these are kind of what I warm up with. <coughs> the melodics are also a great way um, to get a better familiar familiarity with a fingerboard and what all's going on. Um, so that is highly, highly recommended. Um, if nothing else, and you're having a little bit of trouble, either refer back to um, this particular lesson. You can find the scales being played online, YouTube, all that kind of fun stuff, uh, so that you can kind of play along and make sure that you're hitting all your pitches. Um, I would highly recommend doing this with a tuner, um, and then find and make sure you are at the dead center of the notes as you're going up. Obviously, make sure you're in tune first. Um, and yeah, so these are, this lesson hasn't been so much, let's go play something. It's getting into the nuts and bolts of the mechanics of playing. Um, it's the, the grunt work. It's the, it's the obnoxious stuff that nobody wants to work on that really helps separate, um, the people who know how to play their instrument and the people who know how to play some songs on this instrument. Um, so moving forward, I would highly recommend you work on um, these scales and the etudes that we worked on previously are going to be very helpful in making sure that you've got um, the hand distance, the, the interfinger distance for what's going on. Um, and then it'll also help you with a lot of those shifts, which are a fair bit larger. So um, with that, I will bid you all adieu and uh, yeah, have fun. Practice, 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 practice. Thank you.